You have made the distinction between sexual harassment, which you say this was not, and an invasion of personal privacy. Can you explain that, what you mean by that, and how you reacted to that in the moment? Absolutely. I think it's an important conversation to have because, you know, we have to, we, we are in a time now, I've, I've heard repeatedly now where people are acknowledging that we are at, in a culture shift. And that's true. That's exactly why I decided to speak out because this type of behavior, while it's not, it doesn't rise to the level of sexual assault and it doesn't rise to the severity in which we are um, oftentimes hearing about various violations to your body we don't take oftentimes this lower level of invasion of space and touchings of your body, unwanted touchings of your body in, in the, the exact same kind of seriousness in which we do the other type of behaviors. And for me, um, in this situation, it was unwanted. It was shocking because of the power difference. Context is also important here. I'm in no way suggesting, and I, and I think this is, a again, a conversation that's necessary because it's not about just hugging someone or, you know, like, oh, gosh, now I can't touch anybody or, oh, she touched him on his shoulder. Did she violate him? That's silly. This is about context and understanding that there's a very, very powerful man that it is, he is the second most powerful powerful man in the United yeah. States at the time, and I was a candidate, and I was not expecting him to touch me in that kind of an intimate way and, and to kiss me, and, and regardless of what his motivation was, it, uh, there was no personal relationship there. There was nothing that, that would have, that any person would consider normal in that interaction. And so, so yes, it, it made me feel like I couldn't do anything to stop it. Has Joe Biden or anybody from Biden's team reached out to you recently? No, I have not heard from anyone. Would you like to hear from him or from somebody on his team? I, I would. I mean, you know, look, I, I think that part of his statement and what I did, I stated before that I felt it was better than the first one, yeah. um, is that he said he was willing to listen. And I hope that he is. You know, I, I, I've never said that I thought that he was a bad person. I think that for me, this and other positions that he's taken are problematic and, and that he does not acknowledge that the, that the way in which he treats or at least the way in which he's interacted with many women, because that was the reason why I decided to say something, was because this important aspect of his behavior that he has done many, 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 many times over, there has been stories written about his inappropriate behavior. There has well, been, of course, video compilations, et cetera. That was never addressed or discussed by the media. And again, I felt that it was because this type of behavior was not being taken seriously, and it let should. Me Oh, I'm sorry, Assemblywoman. Let me ask you about that, actually, the idea that there are these sort of video compilations, photo compilations, et cetera. So one of the images that often comes up, of course, is Stephanie Carter, uh, the wife of former Defense Secretary Ash Carter. She has now published her own account of this moment that we're showing here. And she talks in detail about why this happened, the idea that this was two friends. She says her story is not yours. You can see the headline here, the Me Too story that wasn't me. She says the Joe Biden in my picture is a close friend helping someone get through a big day for which I will always be grateful. Your response to that? That is not in conflict at all with anything that I wrote about or anything that I have said. In fact, it is exactly so it doesn't what give I'm you talking pause? about. Okay. Abs uh, no, absolutely not. That in that situation, that they had a relationship. If if he and he knew that. And so if she if he touched her shoulder and and she felt comforted by that, then that's her experience because, and she was not surprised by that. And that was completely normal because that's how they interact probably all the time. I had no previous interaction with Mr. Biden in that way ever before. I had met him a couple of times. It was always very professional, always very uh, normal as you would interact in a professional setting and in a, in a political setting. And then that transpired. And so that's why it was so shocking. There was no personal relationship there. And, and I, this is, again, a conversation that is necessary because it's about a power imbalance. It, whether it was the vice president of the United States or a CEO or men who were powerful and believe that they are entitled to women's spaces and they can touch them and do whatever they want whenever they want, that is what I'm saying is wrong. And, and for, many, for many years, 
No one talked about that in a serious way. I think if we had, if this had, if the media had talked about that picture and others in a serious way, then maybe Ms. Carter would have defended him and and explained that situation a lot earlier. Hmm. You know, and, and maybe that behavior would have changed if we had had this conversation a lot earlier. You know, I, I'm just shocked that no one has ever told Vice President Biden stop interacting with women that way. You're making them feel uncomfortable, or at least we think you're making them feel uncomfortable because that is the perception that, that we're seeing from the outside in. And certainly so, if you would talk to women like me, I would have yeah. said, absolutely, yes, my gosh, stop touching me. But you don't, you don't say that immediately to somebody so powerful. Thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Why don't you subscribe? It's really easy. Just click on that button down there. And for more news from MSNBC, click on any of these videos here for the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more videos from MSNBC with our newsletters. Head over to msnbc.com newsletters to sign up.